Uh, I'll start with the current education landscape in Texas, um, and that means I start with how well our kids are doing. Kids, And we have gotten better with all of our kids. We are doing better with poor kids. We are doing better with middle class kids. But on the whole, we haven't changed. Uh, and the reason uh, is obvious on the next slide, slide six, is because our students have become markedly um, um, uh, poorer, at least from lower income households, over the last 20 years. So even though our educators have improved the effectiveness of our system over the last 20 years. Um, the, the, the short version of the story is we're just not getting better fast enough. The, real, the, the reality is this, though. Would you agree that the state share has continued to decrease since 2007 to where we're at today? It's, yeah, it's very clear that the state share has declined. There is a lot of work that happens in middle school and high school to address gaps that have formed in students. It's very expensive, very labor intense, um, and just fundamentally we're um, we're a lot better off in attacking the achievement gap if we never let it start in the first place. Um, you know, I guarantee you somewhere in Texas right now there's a high school student that's raising his hand or her hand and saying, teacher, when am I ever going to use this? this? So this question of, of relevance and this question of rigor in the high school experience um, is important. And you have high schools all over Texas that are re-engineering themselves. And we had a lot of debate last session, particularly about 3 through 8. One yes. through F because we have very little little to, me to measure. You would agree with that? Yeah, we have we have grade level knowledge and skills as as reported by the multiple star assessments, but much beyond that, we don't have anything um, right. centrally. Now the districts have a host of metrics that they can use, which is why um, uh, y'all uh, in House Bill 22 adopted this local accountability exactly. component, so that they could add additional metrics that they have access to that we don't collect in Austin. Generally, um, um, we try not to sort of surprise educators as much as possible. It's a, it's a goal, not necessarily a hard and fast reality. Sure. We we spend as a, as policymakers, certainly we as an agency, spend a great deal of time talking about star and end of year summative assessments that have accountability stakes tied to them. But there are a lot more assessments that happen in. Um, in our schools and what I would say after having talked to lots and lots of teachers is that there there really is no learning without some kind of assessment. We think um, it is worthy of us to consider rather than having like a three hour sit down for a third grader at the end of the year maybe let's split the star up into chunks so they be done in 45 minute blocks over you know a couple weeks. There's been bills that have been filed this legislative session that basically say, hey, we want to get rid of the STAR test. Yes, sir. Parents are like, oh, my God, that's so great. Let's just do that. Everybody needs to do it. Can you explain why we can't do that? Well, there's a variety of reasons, but um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start with um, there's, a, there's $2 billion uh, at stake because if we don't have a STAR test, we will definitely be out of compliance with federal law, and it... Um, we will lose all of our ESSA money, which is about a billion nine per year. It's actually, um, I think, listed in here. And there is some argument that we would also then lose all of our IDEA funding, potentially all of our school lunch funding, all of our Perkins funding. Um, so that's one reason. As uh, Representative King pointed out earlier, at, the, at least in grades three through eight, we don't have any other measures for accountability, so that would be the end of uh, a public school accountability system as well. But we do have some tests that are optional. That's correct. That we there's, have within our system. There's and I know four or so. Representative Van Deaver's tried, and and I've tried, and we've tried multiple times. So there's ways to there's ways to make it better. Absolutely. But the reality is, is that having a piece of legislation that says we're getting rid of all star testing is is is, is not. We can't do it. Yeah. The, the, so in fifth and eighth grade, for example, we place stakes on students. As a, at a state legislative level to pass the tests, um, that that's not required by federal law. That could clearly not, um, it's not a requirement. Our EOCs, we require three out of five to graduate, and actually that's sunsets, so we'll, if, unless laws change, we'd require five out of five. That's also not a federal requirement. That's just something that we require, so that's not, um, uh, str strictly speaking, necessary. Um, and then the four or five uh, assessments that we do in addition to the ESSA requirements um, uh, are not um, so if, if you wanted to um, phase those out, you could do as well. Um, again, all of these have other policy considerations even besides federal law because if you don't have a social studies test, that means you don't have social studies incorporated in the accountability system in 3 through 8, and therefore the accountability system is a little narrowly, more narrowly focused. So these are all considerations that are worthy of policy discussion.